The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Ladies and gentlemen, dear fleet colleagues, welcome to this Global Fleet webinar. My name is Steven Schufs. I am Chief Editor for Global Fleet and Fleet Europe. We are glad that you could join us for this webinar on the TCO differences across Europe and why that matters for your fleet strategy. We are sure that you will appreciate the time and the efforts of our experts in preparing this session. Why this topic? Well, total cost of ownership or TCO is a central concept in fleet management. It unites all elements that bear upon the cost of a company car, as you know, from the start of the contract until the very end. The TCO is also a universal concept, valid in every market, however mature or not. But TCO is not a fixed one. It's not a fixed concept. The elements of TCO are volatile and market-specific. Even within Europe, the definition of TCO can vary and as it has evolved over time, TCO will con continue to change also in the future. In today's webinar, you will first get insight in the key results of a unique global TCO survey conducted by GE Capital's consultancy team. Afterwards, we will deep dive in some country specifics with regard to the TCO equation and you will get a case study insight about the use of TCO in a real corporate fleet environment. So looking at today's speakers and at the program for this session. First, I will give the webinar floor to Mr. Florian Waldegger, Director of Global Fleet Consulting at G Capital International. He will explain the highlights of the TCO report and comment on country-specific TCO examples. Thereafter, Mr. Michael Paul, Senior Procurement Business Partner Fleet at Microsoft will present his view on the importance of the TCO concept. And finally, there will be time for you to ask any question you'd like to both our expert speakers in our Q&A at the end of the webinar. You can do so by using the chat function in this webinar too. So, I am now happy to hand over the webinar floor to Mr. Florian Waldegger, Director Global Fleet Consulting at GE Capital International. Florian, welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, Stephen. Thank you very much and welcome to all of you. If we can move to the next page, please. In the first quarter of this year, our consultancy group issued a document which should allow you to easily spot differences in TCOs across countries and poles. Of course, as most of you are aware, the total cost of ownership will rise uninfluenced by several different reasons. The financing and the funding type, the level of services used, contractual duration, mileage, discounts and usage profiles heavily impacting the overall TCO. Therefore, we decided to use the most common solution in each country across Europe, usually full operational lease. Reviewing passenger cars only, I must admit. On the right hand side, you can see all services included. Related to fuel costs, we decided to work with manufacturer terms and fuel prices on country levels. Let's have a brief view on the global findings before we will continue with the European country specifics. Stephen, can you please go to the next deck? Not a huge surprise, we will spot that depreciation fuel are the key cost drivers overall with 67% in total, followed by SMR and accident insurance costs. If you want to reduce costs in the first phase, you should focus on topics like sourcing, the correct selection of vehicles including the fuel type, and even as CO2 and fuel consumption is a huge discussion point these days, still it will be important to prevent your company from increasing costs by selecting cars with a higher fuel consumption. But let's dig deeper into the European numbers itself, which we will start with on the next page. We decided to highlight first three key criteria. Let's start with the depreciation. As you will see, Spain shows much higher depreciation costs than other countries, especially compared to Italy. 
This is related to the fact that in Spain the registration tax is part of the purchase and therefore included in depreciation. Also in Portugal the depreciation can be higher compared to other South European countries. This is significantly influenced by the registration tax which is related to the net acquisition costs. Just paying net 861 euros more will increase the tax amount by around 1,420 euros if we consider a purchase price of around 25,000 euros. But if we would compare the depreciation with markets such as Germany or Belgium, we believe it's equal. This assumption is not 100% correct. The percentage is equal, but this comes back to the car segment selected. Whilst in Spain, typically, it will be cars in the volume brands arena, Germany and Belgium will purchase mostly cars from the premium manufacturers in the D&E segment, with, of course, higher acquisition costs. Moving on to the next graph on the right-hand side, the overall average on fuel is about 24%, whilst in France we see only 19%. This relates back to the situation France is usually purchasing smaller cars with more fuel-efficient engines. As an example, the Renault Clio against a Volkswagen Passat. This has been forced also via the taxation. France was clearly an early adopter and pushed all of us to consider downsizing already a while ago. Italy also shows lower fuel costs, but in fact it is forced by less annual mileage driven, on average around 10,000 kilometers less than other European markets. Another key driver in cost is part of accidents and insurance. Spain usually installs cars always with a full comprehensive coverage without deductibility. This leads into 18% of the TCO. Italy would show equal numbers with 19%, but in fact as of different reasons. Identified is the country's relatively high rate of road traffic collision, and in addition a rise in the number of thefts up by 10% since 2010 has pushed higher insurance costs. Germany is also using mostly full comprehensive insurance but including a deductibility of 500 euros per event. Having said before, Spain has included registration taxes into the purchase price. I would like to highlight more this point on the following page. Thank you. I would like to quote the European Automobile Manufacturers Association now. Motor vehicle taxation is worth hundreds of billions of euros per year to European governments helping to fund both infrastructure as well as paving the way for the development of non-auto-related projects. Taxation on motor vehicles in the EU15, including VET, sales, registration taxes and excise duty on fuel, it's worth just under 400 billion euros annually, almost three times the total budget of the European Union. However, there is still a huge variation in both the basis for taxation and tax levels across the European Union. Several member states cars, sorry, tax cars on their power, price, weight, cylinder capacity, or combination of these factors though. Increasingly, countries are adopting CO2-based taxation. Presently, 20 EU member states tax vehicles on their roads according to their CO2 emission levels. The automobile industry in Europe is in favor of tax harmonization as a necessary component of the internal market. However, harmonized taxation must be neutral between transport means targeting energy usage, CO2 and emissions. This is the first necessary stage before it becomes possible to have a single European market for transport and energy. As in some countries, the taxes are directly linked to the purchase cost, such markets like the UK, Belgium, Netherlands, it has been seen as an individual contributor. 13% of the TCO in the UK are forced by the national insurance. CO2, of course, has a huge impact. This cost is not just influencing the company, but also the cost for the employee in terms of their benefiting kind liability. Looking at Belgium and Netherlands, we see, see again two different ways of taxation. Belgium does have a CO2-related registration tax, as well as disallowed expenses directly related to the benefit in kind of the employee, which is also CO2-based. In the Netherlands, Tax as so-called BPM is a significant cost factor. In fact, due to engine type and CO2 emission, it can be up to 10,000 euros per car, which will be then paid throughout the lease rate. Of course, tire costs are impacting as well. In countries as the winter can be though, tough and winter tires are required, 
will show increased percentage compared to southern Europe. As example, in Germany, you're obliged by law to drive winter tires as soon as the temperature is regularly below 7 degrees. In case of an accident without winter tires, you are 100% liable, even if the other driver forced to crash. Before we will get the opportunity listening to Michael, I would like to summarize the overall results and the key takeaways. Crucial as cost influencer will be the possibility to use the power of combined markets, sourcing power, and to drive the selection of correct OEMs based on TCO. In previous exercises led by our consultancy group, we identified cost savings between 5 and 7.5% on average. TCO should be the driver for any harmonized policy decision. This will help to drive strategies such as increased safety, minimize CO2 emissions equal to lower fuel costs, and of course identifying the correct funding methodology. Surely it will support also greater transparency. Beyond this, you can improve your TCO by also implementing strategies to force higher driver safety and behavior. More than 20% of crashes are believed to be a result of drivers being distracted. Mobile phone usage is the main reason. You might have heard that a person using the hands-free kit on the phone will have a longer braking distance than a drunken person in case of an emergency brake. But please, don't drink now while driving. To finalize, we see a clear trend that TCO are going to be used to be prepared for the future, which will be TCM at so-called total cost of mobility. Mobility will be the way of future traveling, and only if you have a clear picture of your costs to date, you will be able to move to TCM. If you want to read the complete white paper, don't hesitate to visit our Key Solutions microsite at the below link. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to your questions. Back to you, Stephen and Michael. Thank you, thank you very much, Florian for your insight and for your explanation of the TCO differences across Europe. As already mentioned before and also repeated by you, Florian, we will now uh, have insight in a more case study related TCO approach. And the presentation will be given by uh, Mr. Michael Paul from Microsoft. And he will, um, of course, explain how TCO is driving, let's say, the importance in his fleet management, and also in order to secure an efficient fleet management, what, uh, what kind of element TCO plays in that. So um, I hope that Michael Paul can hear me. Michael, are you there? Yes, Stephen. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Florian, for your first part of the webinar. And um, yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Today I want to tell you a little bit about how we at Microsoft are using TCO, but before I start, let me give you quickly an overview on the Microsoft fleet globally. Around the globe, we are um, managing around 10,000 cars in 60 plus countries. For Europe, and that is, when we talk about Europe, that's Western Europe, um, that's around 7,000 cars in 13 countries. We are working with 19 car manufacturer groups and with 15 different lease company groups. So why do we offer cars at all? So we are offering the company car benefit according to market standards in order to attract, retain, and motivate the top talents in the IT industry. That also explains that, and it is important to understand, that all the Microsoft cars are benefit cars, so we don't have any utility cars. So what does TCO mean to us and how do we work with this data? We try to have an as, uh, as transparent data as possible instead of the typical or often used lump sum approach. This transparency gives us the insight into the various cost elements and defines certain settings within the team, how we look into data, which cost shares we can expect and so on. When you look at the pie, you will realize that this looks pretty similar to the pie which has been shown by Floria, Florian earlier in this webinar. Not because GE is using our data or because we use GE as single supply, but it simply confirms a common understanding of cost. And this pie, by the way, represents a real car, so that's not anything projected. It's really from a from an, uh, car which left just uh, our fleet. 
We are using TCO to control and manage our spend for company cars. Furthermore, furthermore the data is used for proper budgeting in our finance area. We use the TCO data where possible to review the consumption and pollution data of our fleet and we use it to build the car lists in the various countries. Today I'd like to take a bit of a deeper look into this part of TCO usage and how TCO will rise across Europe. Thanks Stephen for, for moving forward. So for this exercise I've selected a pretty common fleet vehicle BMW 320 diesel touring. Many of you will use that car certainly in your fleets. On the top left table you can see the cost for such a car in the various markets and with various mileage clusters. The costs shown there are without fuel. Of course not all cars exactly the same but with 228 relevant cars in the overview I believe we have a nice set of data we can work with. The color coding shows in green the lowest cost values and in red the most expensive ones. On the top right table the cost per liter diesel is displayed and the average consumption cost based on a consumption figure of 6 liters per 100 kilometer. I've done some recent research on European fuel cost data and it shows a variation on a single liter of diesel of 45 percent across Europe just as of October 2015. So for, for my analysis I've used the annual mileage between 20 and 30,000 kilometers. Both tables combined result in the bar chart on the lower side. Whilst the average cost is shown as line in amber, the different country related cost bars show overall significant deviations. Between Belgium as the cheapest and Switzerland as the most expensive one, we have a cost variation of 100%. Now imagine you would set the available budget across the European theater at just one amount. It sounds a little bit like an unfair game for countries like Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, Switzerland and at least in our example. Now let me get a bit more specific on our practice to find car lists or car basket as they are called sometimes. The example I'm showing is taken from the German fleet but can be applied to many European countries. To familiarize you with the principle, our employees get a company car benefit according to their so-called job levels. Per job level certain cars are defined as reference cars. For those cars we are gathering the TCO numbers for a defined time mileage combination. The cost mix of those cars is setting the budgets for the individual job levels. In this case it is around 700 euro. Our employees in Germany can select out of a list of more than 2000 cars and we have projected TCO cost for all these cars. The TCO of all cars are mapped to the reference budget and if for example a car is cheaper than the job level TCO, the employee can select additional options without a private contribution. Or in case the TCO is higher, the private contribution is defined based on the difference between individual TCO and the reference budget. In the graph you can see some relevant cars in our German fleet and their list prices. As we are not considering the list prices at all for our budget setting, this is just an additional indicator in the visualization. The orange bar on the right shows the average list price. The green bubbles are showing the remaining driver budget before a private contribution would be required. The higher the green bubbles, the more remaining budget is available. And I think it's quite interesting to compare a couple of those cars. For example, the Mercedes C-Class which has the biggest free option budget compared with the BMW 3 Series whose budget is comparably small whilst it has nearly the same list price. Or in other words, the formerly mentioned 700 euro minus the remaining driver budget is showing the TCO for the car. In the comparison between the 3 Series and the C-Class, this is a difference of more than 100 euro per month and I can tell you it is not the front end discount which is steering this difference. Both cars are pretty similar there. Overall, this example should demonstrate how we use the TCO to build our car list and make them as fair as possible for us at Microsoft, 
but also for the employees who want to drive attractive cars. I believe that many of us here in the call are using already TCO to define the choice of cars versus previously methodologies like list price, net list price, net list price minus discount, finance lease rate and so on. You all know that. I hope the principle and usage is clear, but please feel free to drop your questions late in the Q&A session. So finally, what are our learnings? Only TCO allows proper planning and calculation of required budgets, either from finance or for individual car level budgeting. Transparency is key. Go for cost breakdown to identify high cost drivers, which ultimately enables you to steer your costs long term. Significant cost drivers can be consumption, but also, as mentioned by Florian earlier, insurance, taxation, extra costs for wide tires, and so on. Try to find relevant market data in order to compare your fleet with the market. Although you will not find data which fits exactly to your own framework, like discounts, contract duration and mileage and so on. It is good to have some indication and by reviewing market data over a longer period you will find indications which can, you can apply to your own fleets. As we've seen on previous slide, a cheap list price car is not necessarily a car which is low on TCO. Too many influencing factors are included in the overall cost building. And ultimately, and to close the circle, do not set same cost budgets across Europe. It will not work as you will hurt either hurt your company or your employees. And when you do some proper analysis and you will make your main stakeholders happy, finance, HR and your employees. Thank you for your attention and interest and back to Stephen. Michael, thank you. Thank you for uh, your presentation and also um, for your forward-thinking insight. Um, so time now for the final part of this Global Fleet webinar uh, on TCO differences across Europe. We will have our Q&A session. So if as a participant you have a question for our experts, please send them via uh, the chat function in your webinar tool so that we can ask you questions to our experts. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, gentlemen, what questions do we have? Um, I see here one for you both, and I would like to start with uh, Florian. Uh, Florian, you uh, both have underlined, let's say, the necessity of transparency in TCO. Uh, as we know, um, uh, quite a lot of figures related to the composition of the TCO will be given, will be sent uh, by suppliers. The question is, what can be done from a fleet customer perspective to optimize the transparency in the TCO so that as a fleet customer you can use the right data in the right way? Can you please share your view? Of course. An optimized reporting will be crucial to achieve the transparency. Without, it will be very, for me, more or less impossible. If you have several suppliers, it's a bit more tricky. I'm sure you will have the possibility to discuss and approach getting the same level of information back. But let me re-emphasize how important it will be to understand the differences between the countries because you can compare percentages, but if you don't know the final numbers in the background or the reasons why they are looking like this, it will be difficult. Okay. Um, Michael, uh, same question for you, as you are, let's say, an international fleet manager, so you can uh, talk uh, from a fleet customer perspective. Um, do you agree with Florian that uh, an excellent reporting is key in terms of having uh, the transparency in your TCO, and what kind of other tips do you have with regard to transparency in TCO? Yeah, Stephen, I, I can only echo what Florian said. Um, the reporting. Um, is a must-have, and um, as I outlined, and, and you said, transparency um, is key as well. So, if you don't know the cost drivers, if you just have one lump sum, um, that doesn't really help you. Yeah. So you need to to work together with your suppliers um, in a in a fair partnership, and uh, get the, the the cost breakdown, and then analyze it over time. Yeah. 
um, that that's that's really my recommendation and I mean there are a couple of suppliers who might be a little bit hesitant to 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 say well um, I don't want to show you all the numbers mm -hmm. yeah discuss it with them in a fair way but at the end if they don't want to show you the details then um, let's move on there are enough suppliers who are willing to do that and if you manage a fleet it's a must okay um, Florian we have uh, another question for you um, you showed us uh, some kind of examples of TCO composition uh, can you explain uh, based on the survey that you did what kind of major evolution we can perhaps expect for the future when it comes to TCO elements are there any elements where you say probably that will become even yes more important in the TCO equation fair question um, some time ago the industry was looking only at the depreciation of financing cost for example based on purchase prices whilst fuel costs were getting more important as we have seen the volatile fuel prices on the markets within the last 12 to 18 months I think we're knowing this is kind of a part where you can influence but you cannot manipulate the market nowadays fleet managers are also looking more and more into other costs such as accident as I explained before markets like Italy 19 percent as of all the road collisions this is really important so therefore TCOs are the, the, the key crucial component um, otherwise you can't see the big picture changing and as I also quickly said before travels overall will be more important to the future so this is why I personally really believe total cost of mobility will be the future and uh, I expect mm -hmm. to see in the future in the pie chart not only parts linked uh, uh, to the cars also to other areas such as travel okay um, Michael a question for you and it's I think uh, a relevant one uh, you uh, showed us how you use your TCO uh, to let's say determine uh, the budget uh, of your car fleet drivers the question is related to uh, how often that you review your TCO budget and who has let's say the ownership uh, in reviewing those budgets is it international is it local how do you deal with that so how often do you review and who has the ownership? That's that's a good good question from the audience, I believe. Um, and it's important, in fact. Um, we, we are updating our TCO um, budgets for for the car lists typically on a quarterly basis. So that, that is long enough um, to to make it somehow convenient for everyone um, and short enough to, to catch uh, changes. Yeah. On the other hand, we are we are measuring our our real TCO, so the real cost data which are coming in. We are managing that and, and measuring that and analyzing that on a on a on a monthly basis or on a case by case basis. When we are comparing things with each other, we have a quite good uh, reporting tool. Um, we can do a lot of data feed into Excel, which is my preferred one, of course, and then. Um, that helps a lot, really, also to, compa to, to compare the projected TCO cost versus uh, the reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question for you, Michael, um, and I'm going back to a sl previous slide, I think this one. Um, there is a question uh, on the slide. Can you explain the bar chart with purchase price and green ball available um, option cost is the option is the options cost monthly or for full uh, understanding is a higher ball a sign that more options can be added before the total av available monthly cost is met I will repeat can you explain this bar chart and yes explain once again a little bit how it works and what is let's say the kind of information that uh, our audience need to know when it comes to uh, the options available okay okay yeah absolutely um, when you take a look on the right hand side you see you see the axis which is from 0 to 180 and uh, when you when we go back to to the Mercedes C class which is pretty much in the middle of the of the slide so you see that this green ball is at around 160. That means 
that the employee has the opportunity in this case to select options which have a value, a monthly lease value of 160 um, euros. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, or the other way around, when you take a look into the BMW 518, um, which is the fourth one from the left-hand side, yeah, there you are at, at around something 20, 22 or so, 25 euros. There's just 25 euros left, um, monthly budget. So you can relatively easy say um, when, when you apply a, a typical lease rate factor in Germany, uh, you can pretty easily calculate what that means um, on, on, the, on the option price. I hope that, okay. that this explains, but please let the questions come if not. Another question for you. <clears throat> the question is as follows. When uh, your budget is set on TCO for different countries, different markets, is it set on the same level of vehicles and only TCO plays a role or different market, let's say, uh, specifics uh, involve different vehicles? So how do you how do you use let's say your uh, TCO in setting up the TCO budget? Is it really country by country, and that you also then have a look at uh, a certain type of vehicles that you select, or do you say okay, this is some kind of TCO budget for that vehicle uh, on an international level? Yeah. Um no, we don't set it uh, equally in uh, in each country. And let's stick to Western Europe. Um, so in Germany, it might be a 3 Series, which is the reference car. And in Italy, it might be, I don't know, um, an Alfa Romeo or a Volkswagen Passat or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Interesting-wise, uh, our Italian friends, they love to drive uh, German cars, um, not so much their own, and uh, French cars. So that we, we always go into the markets, yeah, and, and uh, we are working pretty closely with our HR department because they tell us what the market median looks like in the IT industry, and that's what, what we are concentrating on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we uh, do that really question. individually. Individu sorry, yes. Stephen, we do that no really problem. individually by country. And mm -hmm. um, coming coming back to, to the first question, I think there was the question, who is doing that? Who has the ownership? Is that local yes. or international team? Um, it's a combination. We are working uh, um, across Europe with um, a fleet manager, an external partner. And um, we are doing that um, in collaboration with these guys. They have their... their um, their, their orders, how we want to see it, and um, they review that on a, on a regular basis, and then they will think with us um, how to move forward. Okay. Um, Florian, uh, related, let's say, to the question that Michael received, uh, a question for you. Uh, you did the global survey on TCO. We saw in your presentation and also the presentation of Michael that there are uh, there are key differences, let's say, in TCO across the different markets. So the question is related to the fact, um, does it make sense to work out an average international TCO and use it, let's say, in your fleet management? Or do you say from your experience that uh, it's probably better to always look at the local TCO and look at a local TCO? What is your vision on that? Um, personally, I believe it can help to better understand where your costs are coming from if you create an international average. Um, but if you see a large number in accidents, it will be good to understand then afterwards in which countries it's driven by that, as an example. So it really helps you as a starting point, but of course, the local or country-specific TCO are the crucial component for you to prepare a clear plan to impact these positively in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's clear. We have another question from Michael. It's uh, once again uh, related to the setup of your TCO budgets. And the question is, what market data 
do you use to set your TCO budgets? Because uh, couldn't there be a risk, for example, that if you uh, set current budgets based on some kind of historical benchmark data, that perhaps your TCO is not uh, right anymore? Yeah, I think we need to differentiate. Um, we, we are using, and not, not we, but our HR colleagues, I think they, they are using um, HR market data. And I've heard Towers Watson or Mercer, um, but they are not asking for budgets. So they say, for example, in whatever, Germany, um, for, for this and that type of job, this and that type of car is required. Let's stick to this three series, three series BMW or five series, whatever. And then we define how much budget do we need for that car. And if we went, we'll end up with these, for example, 700 euro, what, I, what I've shown you, um, that's the reference mark. So that's 100. And everything which, which is available across the, the car list then will be mapped to these, to these 700 euros. OK, good. Um, a question for uh, Florian. Uh, it's based on the global survey that you did. And for sure, people are interested, let's say, in how global international it is. And there is a specific question uh, related to the Turkish car market. Do you also have in your survey uh, some kind of comparison in terms of TCO uh, with four for the Turkish market? No, unfortunately not. So we have reviewed in our global white paper more than 30 countries. 13 have been reviewed very in detail, but the Turkish market was in fact not in scope at that moment. Okay. But I can imagine that people, uh, when they follow uh, the link uh, given uh, in your presentation in this webinar, if I, for example, go back, where they can uh, download the full white paper, that normally they can also have an insight in more specific data about all the markets that you dealt with. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. There Perfect. are, for example, markets in like U.S., New Zealand, Mexico, and so on and so on. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> Michael, another question for you. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on how you uh, value, how you rate the uh, service maintenance and repair cost in uh, setting up your TCO budget? Well, if you can specify what you mean by rate, um, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to talk about it. But uh, when, when you go into, into my presentation, please, Stephen, the first page or the second, yeah, there where, where the pie is. I mean, you see in this pie, and hopefully you all can see it, um, operational services, that's, that's what it's called. That's, that's maintenance, repair, that includes mm -hmm. um, tires, for example. Yeah. So they are simply part of um, the overall TCO. The only thing what we check um, on a regular basis, on again, on a country by country basis, is if the share between the finance part or the contracted finance cost and then the operational services and the fuel, this share that should fit somehow to each other. And this pie is a typical one, um, I would say, um, which, which represents pretty well um, what we've experienced. Okay, thank you. Um, Florian, uh, another question for you. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on uh, the markets that you uh, looked into and where you say, okay, uh, surveying those markets, those markets are probably the most, let's say, um, valuable and we can expect the biggest growth potential in the future for those kind of markets when it comes to fleet management and also TCO optimization. Do you have insight on that? Um, I could speak now for, for, for hours and ages, but uh, I don't, uh, would like to keep it more short. The Western European market is pretty mature and well-educated. Um, but the Eastern European market is, I think, for most of us, a large growth potential. 
also especially for fleet managers because we see more and more production areas and sales regions moving into the Eastern European market like Russia and Turkey and Poland and Czech and so on. So I personally believe this is really the next big market where also fleet managers need to prepare themselves for as fleets will grow there for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Michael, um, another question for you. You use the TCO concept for different purposes, one of them being CO2 steering. Can you explain this a little bit more in detail? How do you do this and with what result? Yeah, um, it's it's a tricky one, Stephen, because um, w what we what we do is, and I think I, I said that in, uh, in in my presentation, wherever applicable. So it's of course a question of how good the data is, and uh, I mean, all of us here in the call, I believe, know um, how difficult it is to get correct mileage data, and correct mileage data is a must whenever you calculate a consumption, for example, or pollution. Um, but we found ways to, to really um, check the, the real consumption against the, against the theoretical consumption, which comes from the OEMs. Um, and um, in a specific case, like um, now with the hybridization of the car fleets, I don't think that anyone in this call will fully believe those low CO2 numbers or equally low consumption figures which are provided by the OEMs. And um, if you include the fuel cost, the projected fuel cost into um, into your overall TCO budget, and it turns out that the car is not consuming two liters per 100 kilometer as it should, but it consumes five liters. Yeah. Then you have a deviation of three euro per uh, of three liters, sorry, um, per 100 kilometer, and that sums up a lot. So we we are using. Um, our cost information and wherever available our, our um, uh, f fuel volume information to really analyze that and then give um, advice to the different countries um, how to work with things like that. And that, that will end up, for example, in uh, a private contribution um, for the employees in countries where, for example, the hybrid cars are consuming more than they should. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for your answer, Michael. Um, a final question, and we will start with Michael. What is your key tip for corporate fleet managers here in the call that want to start using this TCO concept as a steering and cost control mechanism? What would be your key tip to them? Well, my, my key advice would be um, look for, look for uh, transparency and get a good reporting. Yeah. You, you need to have high quality data which you can analyze and then try to find um, parameters in the market uh, which you can benchmark with or at least which you can compare with to understand certain trends. Um, and then that would be my, my, my basic recommendation and uh, wh when you do that properly you will find a lot of um, very valuable information. Um, in your data, which you then can use to, to really manage your fleet cost. Okay, thank you very much. Florian, uh, what would be your key advice uh, for clients and customers that uh, want to use TCO as really a driving mechanism for the fleet management? Um, first of all, I'm completely aligned with Michael's opinion on that, and uh, as having said earlier, it helps to increase the transparency. Tons of examples are existing as the pure depreciation financing costs are, of course, looking equal, or as Michael showed also before, equaling list prices. But as soon as you're going to look deeper into the numbers, you will spot the difference. It won't be only just fuel, also SMR and tire costs can lead into the complete different results. So coming back to your question, if you have a clear picture thanks to TCO, you then can take the correct decision for your fleet and prepare your upcoming strategy. Okay. Florian, Michael, thank you very much for your expertise. I think that uh, you both gave our audience a more clearer picture on TCO and the TCO setup. So that is really great. Um, we really want to thank you for your time and the preparation of this webinar. 
uh, we believe that it was really a valuable topic uh, 